Where's the power and the presence gone? And then there were six water pots, stone pots, just filled with water. Or they weren't, they were empty. But six is man. Six is the number of men. And then a stone. And what does this in Ezekiel 36, what does God take us out of us? Hearts of stone. So Jesus is talking here about people that were pretty ordinary, pretty normal until we connect with Jesus. And then the water becomes the best wine, intoxicating wine, in filling of the Holy Ghost. So when you look at this miracle, it's not yet time that he fills you with the wine, the best wine. So for those of us who have had an infilling of the Holy Spirit, being baptized by the Holy Spirit, <coughs> being immersed in the Holy Spirit, whatever, for those of us, sometimes it feels like I'm about as spiritual as a wet paper bag. Anybody ever felt like that? Sometimes it just seems the anointing. I'm not sure where it went, but I definitely don't feel it around here. Sometimes it's like that. But Jesus, you know, the early church kept getting refilled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 4, they were praying. And again, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So they were filled, you know, like again. And sometimes we, we don't realise that there, there might be a crack in the stone jar and the wine leaks out. But you are filled with the finest wine, the Holy Ghost. You're filled with it. The challenge is we don't act drunk. We don't live like we're under the influence. I had an uncle who was an alcoholic. And it didn't matter what time of the day, what time of the night, he'd be where his bottles of grog were. And he was pretty sloshed most of the time. And he was always waiting for the pub to open. He was there until the pub closed. And then he was home, and it didn't matter whether it was breakfast or lunch. His, his alcohol. He was addicted. Like he was he was an alcoholic. If we can draw a parallel to the spiritual, how addicted are we to the presence of the Holy Spirit? How addicted are we? Or to the presence of the Lord? Do you crave him? Can you not wait till the next fix? We've got, to, we've got to actually yield to the intoxicating effect of the wine of God, the Holy Spirit. A lot of times we don't yield because well, it just doesn't seem proper. Or right, or whatever, and so we have these. I know, and, and you know, how many times do we have to have this argument? God, is that you, or is that me? Like I revert to that, but I really don't want to do what He wants me to do. <laughs> God, I'll do anything you want me to do. Snitch, no, it's you. Is that you, or is that me? I'm just not sure. We all have little escape clauses that we try to use, which we can't use anymore. But he took these, these stone pots and he said, fill them with water. And then they were touched by Jesus. And then came the best wine. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, filled with the best wine from heaven. You should slosh as you walk. Because you're filled with heaven's wine. We 
We have, I, I, there's so many different nationalities in this room, but sometimes our nationality causes us to kind of quench the Holy Spirit. You're very polite. Yeah. That's I'm, right. I'm looking at the faces at this minute, but I look at the faces. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians says, chapter 5 says, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't put the fire out. Don't put the fire out. Don't put the fire out. Don't quench it. We're told in Ephesians we can grieve him. Now the number of times, oh, Holy Spirit. I'm so sorry I grieved you. So we're coming into a season where we have to actually live under the intoxicating effect of the Holy Spirit and just go with the flow. Whatever that looks like. It will be love because the Holy Spirit fills us with the love of God. But we are to be intoxicated, right? Intoxicated. You know when babies get intoxicated by the milk and they get that little milk drummy kind of look on their face like, oh my. <laughs> and get that look. You know, babies get it when they've had so much milk that they can't fit any more in. So we need to be like that. Come on. You know, but we, we sometimes think, well, it's not proper, it's not right, uh, it's not acceptable in my, my job, it's acceptable in my church. You know, it should be only doing what's acceptable in heaven. Right? What's acceptable in heaven? And it's okay in heaven to get absolutely intoxicated and drunk by the Spirit of God and be and just go with the flow with him and allow him to direct you. We've got to be addicted yes. to his presence. We've got to allow the wine of heaven to, 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 uh, to just flow. It's just intoxicating. You know, when you take communion, allow the intoxication of the wine of heaven to flow through your veins. Like, absolutely get some joy. You know, get some joy. People are happy drunks. If they're cranky drunks, it's not heavenly wine. But they're happy. And we've got, you know, so Jesus is saying here, I'm, I'm, I'm at a wedding, but my time is not quite yet ready. And I, but I'm ready to fool them with wine, even though I shouldn't be doing it yet. My time's not here, Mum. But she said, whatever he says, do it. And so he filled them. These, these stone pots, water pots, mm. filled them to the full. And then they became the best wine. So good that, you know, wow. The best wine's always given at the first, and then you're giving it at the last, and everybody's so drunk with another wine, they don't even know what it is. But honestly, where have we, where have we reached the point where we hinder the Holy Spirit? But we're not sure what he wants. We're not free to flow because we're scared of what people are going to say or how it's going to look or what's going to be the fallout. Like, who gives a whip? You either please God or you don't. You either please him or you don't. And so this is the wine. This is the intoxication of the wine. Crave him. Crave him. Let him fill you up so that you are overflowing. And you know, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not so much about speaking in tongues. That's a lovely bit of icing on the cake. It's about the power of God demonstrating yes. through your life. He says that people yes. know you're a witness to Jesus everywhere you go. That when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power, dunamis power. And you'll be a witness for Jesus everywhere you go. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his job. Get you drunk. Shelly, you know what that's like. You came out of that. I mean, it was years ago. I didn't even came out of that. But you know what I'm talking about. But you know what it's like. Right? And you need to go back to it. Stir up the people at your Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but it's, 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 it's amazing. If you stop and think about it, when you're, you, you have been filled with heaven's wine. Filled with it. Another take on it 
is the new wineskin, the old wineskin bar. So if you want to turn, am I making sense? Yeah. And it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, that we are an earthen vessel carrying an amazing treasure, Holy Spirit. But in Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, it talks about wineskins. King James says, follows. But wineskins, get, get a thing on the word skins. Chapter 9, verse 17, he says, Neither is new wine put in old wine skins. For if it is, the skins burst and are torn in pieces, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are ruined. But new wine is put into fresh wine skins, and both are preserved. So he's talking about wine skins. So back in the day, it was actually goats that they would actually use goat skin that sum up the legs. And they would use the net for pouring in the liquid or drinking out of it, and it would be sealed, you know, tied with laces and sealed. So they're talking about skins. But what are we? Skins. Yeah. Right? And, we're, and to carry the new wine, we've got to become a new wine skin. If you are an old wine skin, the only thing that, that would change the old wine skin into a new one, they would have to rub it in salt and, and, and let soak it in water. The rubbing it in salt was bacteria, got rid of any bacteria that was on it. Soaking it in water made it soft. And then they massaged oil into it so that the skin would soften up. So, you know, so it doesn't matter how old we've been in the Lord. Our old wine skin can always become a new wine skin that can hold the new wine. You've got to recognise that you're a new wine skin and you're carrying new wine, okay? You're moving in the fresh flow of the Holy Ghost. He wants you absolutely filled and flourished and intoxicated and surrendered and moving with Him in the things of God. The gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, all of the amazing things of the Holy Spirit, that you carry Him, why are we so quiet about it? And when I was born again, I got two questions that were asked. Are you born again and are you filled with the Spirit? That was all that mattered. Are you born again? Have you been filled with the Spirit? Nothing else mattered. If you haven't been filled with the Spirit, everybody would lay their hands on your head and practically rub your head raw until you were speaking in tongues and baptized in the Holy Ghost. It was just like so paramount. It had to be. You've got to, you've got to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, you're just going to love everybody. Yeah. When you feel with the Spirit, you're going you're gonna to move, you're going to see things, miracles will happen, signs and wonders will follow. When you feel with the Spirit, you're baptized Ooh. in the Holy Ghost. Wow. And so we've got this amazing, like, you know, like we, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit filled with His presence. And this is filled with the new wine. You are a new wine skin. But so there are some things that can happen that can crack skins when they get a bit old. Let me tell you what can crack some of our skins. Vexations. Anybody ever get so vexed that you just want to slap somebody? Am I the only one? Probably. Vexations, frustrations, anxieties, worries, bitterness, envy, jealousy, selfishness, sin, they all form cracks in the white skin. They harden the white skin. They make it incapable of carrying the But you're a new wineskin. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're a new wine skin, filled with new wine. Filled with new wine. Old wine has gone. This is a completely different season, different time. No. Things that are happening around the world, Asbury Revival. Please, God, let it continue. We'll pull it up pure and free. Yes. It's moving on to other college campuses. Uh, there's been some spontaneous worship in Times Square. Please, God, Australia. Yes. Cool. On the list. Yeah. came to me. Asbury, Durant, Jackson, Georgia, is all places we're involved right now. Jackson, Georgia High School, Seymour University, Ohio Christian University. Lee University, back to Austin, Texas, Parker, Missouri, India University, Wesleyan, the Gate, Charlotte, North Carolina, Kingsway, Birmingham, Alabama, Kingdom Life, Waterville, Israel, Uganda, University of Kentucky, 
Eastern Kentucky, Kentucky Christian, and Christ for All Nations, Dallas, Texas. So, Woo! Yes. 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 Did you notice it's all for the younger generation? Yes. 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 schools and colleges yes. and campuses. Yes. All right, so we, we, we just want what God wants for us. Yes. We're not going to be envious for what's happening there. We want what God's yes. want for us and what He's got for our nation. But you know what's happened? They started to linger in the presence of God. Yes. They started to linger. They started to say, God, I just want you. I just want to worship you. And as they worshipped you, and as they, as the, maybe the prayer meeting came to an end, some of them walked out, but then they came back. Because we're just so hungry for the presence of God. Because nothing else matters but being in His presence. Nothing else matters but breathing with Him and being in step with Him and living that lifestyle of John 5, 19, where Jesus said, I only ever do the things my Father tells me to do. 